Today we are going to be conducting a squad tactical exercise, or a stick slane. The purpose of stick slanes are to practice tactics, exercise mental agility, become proficient in warrior tasks and drills, and to develop as a leader who can operate in a stressful environment. The most common missions conducted in a stick slane are a recon, ambush, raid, movement to contact, attack, and key leader engagements. Today we'll be conducting a squad attack. The first thing that will happen when you arrive at the Alpha Alpha is 360 degree security. All squad members will be placed in security positions to ensure that the Alpha Alpha is secure for the squad leader to begin planning. Team leaders will then go to each member of their team to assign them a sector of fire. Once security is set, the squad leader will begin receiving his op order from the platoon leader. Once the squad leader has finished receiving his op order, he will issue a warning order to his team leaders so that they can begin preparing their soldiers for the mission. Once the team leaders have received their warning order, they will issue it to each member of their team. The squad leader will then begin planning his op order. Once the squad leader is done preparing his op order, he will brief his five paragraph op order to the squad. During this time, all squad members should be taking notes and copying down all mission pertinent information. This includes, but is not limited to, the mission statement, distance and direction of travel, tasks of subordinate units, priority information requirements, passwords, and required reports. When the op board is complete, the squad will then conduct rehearsals to ensure that everyone knows their task for the mission. At this time, the squad leader will also conduct pre-combat inspections to ensure that everyone has necessary equipment for the mission. Once all rehearsals and pre-combat inspections are complete, the squad will cross the line of departure and begin movement. During movement, soldiers should ensure that they maintain proper spacing, pass back hand and arm signals, and maintain situational awareness as an attack may occur at any time. It is highly possible that your squad will receive indirect fire from artillery. When this happens, it is the squad member's job to get down and call out distance, direction, and description of the indirect fire. Two o'clock, 100 meters, artillery fire. Seven o'clock, 200 meters. Once it is safe to move, the squad leader will call out a distance and direction, and the squad will move there to reconsolidate and get into 360 security. Once security has been established, the team leaders will check for accountability. If there is a casualty that could not move to security, the squad leader will send a team to move the casualty into security. Once the casualty has been moved, field aid will be conducted and the squad leader will call up to hire with a nine-line medevac request. When the medevac has arrived, the casualty will be loaded on board and the squad will continue their mission.
when the squad is nearing their objective, the squad leader will set an objective rally point, or ORP. An ORP is a staging area for the rest of the mission. From the ORP, the squad leader will go on a leader's recon so he can get eyes on the objective and plan out where his fire elements will be placed. Before leaving on his leader's recon, the squad leader will leave a five point contingency plan with his team leader. When nearing the objective, movement should be stealthy to avoid detection. Once the squad leader gets eyes on the objective, he should move to another location to ensure that he gathers all necessary information. Based on the information gathered on the leader's recon, the assault and support by fire teams will move into their positions. Once the squad leader confirms the assault and support positions are set, he will initiate fire using a predetermined signal such as a whistle, flare, or his own M16. Firing will continue until all enemies on the objective are neutralized. At this time, the assaulting element will assault through the objective, making sure that they stay online with each other and do not cross into each other's lanes. While crossing the objective, soldiers will clear any weapons they come across, but continue moving in a quick and tactical manner. LOA, LOA. Once they reach their limit of advance, they will call out LOA to signal the supporting element to assault through as well. When the supporting element reaches their limit of advance, they will call LOA as well, and the squad will move into 360 security. LOA, LOA. The squad will then conduct actions on the objective while the squad leader sends reports up to higher. Team leaders, I need ace reports. During this time, team leaders will be gathering ace reports Two mags, up, up. so that the squad leader is aware of ammo used, any casualties, and any equipment used. One mag, up, up. During this time, EPW teams will conduct searches 
of any enemies on the objective. Once all actions on the objective are complete, the demo team will gather all enemy equipment and place demo charges. The squad will then move off the objective back to the ORP in an organized manner. The assault element will move off on fire in the hole 1, the support element on fire in the hole 2, and the demo team on fire in the hole 3. Once the objective is clear, the demo team will blow the charges. We have now reached the end of this squad training exercise. At this time, the squad will conduct an AAR to discuss the positives and negatives of the mission conducted so that they can learn and improve in the future.